What's up my chemistry people, back for some more kinetics fun! In this video, we are going to analyze concentration versus time data to determine the rate law for a zero first or second order reaction. Breaking it down. First, we are going to identify that the integrated rate law relates the concentration of a reactant and the time passed during a reaction. And number two, we are then gonna determine the order of reaction by interpreting the plots of concentration versus time, natural log of concentration versus time, and one over the concentration versus time. So it turns out if you apply some calculus to integrate the rate laws that we just talked about, you can get an equation that shows the relationship between the concentration of your reactant A and the time of the reaction. This is called the integrated rate law. Again, we're gonna be looking at a generalized reaction in which you have just a single reactant forming products. Now, if you are starting to panic, recognize that you don't actually have to apply any calculus. You don't have to integrate any rate laws. It is given to you on your formula chart. So as you take a look at a rate law for a zero order, first order, and second order reaction, recognize that the integrated rate laws, boom, boom, and boom, are what results after you do a little bit of calculus. But again, fear not, you're given the formulas, you don't actually have to do any calculus for this class. Simply recognize that you're provided with the integrated rate laws on your formula chart, and you can use those integrated rate laws to help you, for example, to determine the concentration after a certain time has passed. So with the rate laws, our focus was on how do the concentrations affect the rate? With the integrated rate laws, we're looking at concentrations and times. Okay, so to sort of avoid a bunch of confusion, we're going to skim over a bunch of math and simply recognize that different orders require different plots to generate straight lines. And straight line plots are really important to help us better understand the relationship between concentration and time, but also for making predictions. For example, what will the concentration be after a certain amount of time? Bottom line, straight line plots are really helpful. If you have a zero order reaction, you are gonna get a straight line when you plot the concentration of your reactant against time. If you have a first order reaction, you will get a straight line when you plot the natural log of concentration against time. And if you have a second order reaction, you will get a straight line if you plot one over the concentration against time. For our purposes in the class, simply recognize what you have to plot to give you a straight line. And then recognize if you are trying to determine the rate constant K from a graph for zero and first order reactions, the slope is gonna be equal to the negative of your rate constant. And for second order reactions, the slope is your rate constant. All right, let's take a quick look at a sample problem to give you a better understanding of sort of how you're gonna have to use the integrated rate laws. Consider the equation for the decomposition of SO2Cl2. The concentration of SO2Cl2 was monitored at a fixed temperature as a function of time during the decomposition reaction. And the following data were tabulated. Boom! First show that the reaction is first order. All right, to do this, we're gonna use the power of our calculator. El poder de la calculadora. First thing I'm gonna do, put these lists into my calculator. Gonna hit stat edit. For my L1 column, I'm gonna put the time. Zero, enter, 100, enter, 200, enter, 300, enter, 400, enter, 500, enter, 600, enter, 700, enter, 800, enter, 900, enter, 1000. Enter 1100, enter 1200, enter 1300, enter 1400, enter 1500, enter. Next, I'm going to move over to my second column and enter the concentrations. 0 0.100, enter. 0 0.0971, enter. 0 0.0944, enter. 0 0.0917, enter. 0 0.0890, 0 0.0865, enter. 0 0.0840, enter. 0 0.0816, enter. 0 0.0793, enter. 0 0.0770, enter. 0 0.0. 748, enter. 0 0.0727, enter. 0 0.0706, enter. 0 0.0666, enter. 0 0.0666, enter. 0 0.0647, enter. All right, so now in my calculator, I have time and concentration 
that I could easily plot and determine whether or not it's zero order. But, but I also want to plot the natural log of concentration against time and one over the concentration against time to see if it's first or second order. To do that very easily, I'm just gonna move up to my L3 column and tell my calculator to take the natural log of all of my L2 or concentration values. Boom, gotta love the calculator. And for my fourth column, I'm gonna tell my calculator to take one over all those concentration values in my L2 column. Boom! Now, this is a graphing calculator so we can graph it. Second stat plot, enter. Our first stat plot we're gonna turn on and we're gonna say it's gonna be L1. And we're gonna say our X list is gonna be L1. Our Y list is gonna be L2. So concentration against time. Second stat plot. Let's also turn on stat plot number two. Except this time, let's keep the X list our time, but let's make the Y list our L2 three values. So now we're going to plot the natural log of concentration against time. Second stat plot. Let's turn on our third plot to compare one over the concentration or our L4 values against time. Graph. Oh man, where are they? Zoom nine for zoom stat. Boom. Okay, so I've plotted all three of them at once and it's kind of difficult to tell which of them is the straightest of the lines. Fear not, let's second quit and think of another way we can use our calculator to confirm that this is a first order reaction. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit second zero to get to my catalog. I'm gonna choose letter D and scroll down to make sure that diagnostics are on, to make sure that I can take a look at my R squared or correlation coefficient. Boom. Next, I'm gonna hit stat over one for calc, and I'm gonna do a linear regression. Enter. First one I'm gonna do is gonna be comparing my L1 or time against my L2 or concentration. So I'm just hit enter, 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 until I get down to calculate, put enter again. Boom. All right, I'm gonna grab this. This represents our concentration against time or zero order. Our correlation coefficient is pretty close to one, 0.996. But let's check out first order. Stat, calc, linear regression. L1 against L3, or natural log. Calculate. Ooh, check out the correlation coefficient here. Notice when we plot the natural log of concentration against time, our correlation coefficient is much closer to one. The data is far more linear, but let's check second order. Stat, calc, linear regression. L1, L4. This is gonna plot one over the concentration against time. Calculate. Ooh. All right, so now, Take a look at the three correlation coefficients. Zero order, concentration against time, first order, natural log of concentration against time, second order, one over the concentration against time. Our most linear plot would be natural log of concentration against time. Correlation coefficient closest to one. Most linear, reaction is first order. Boom, science. All right, so we've confirmed that this is a first order reaction using the power of our calculator. Let's now determine what the rate constant K for the reaction is. Be sure to include units. All right, I'm taking a quick jump to my formula chart. Zoom in on the kinetic section. We're gonna use the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. Boom! Natural log of concentration at time T minus natural log of our initial concentration is equal to negative k times t. Now, you could choose any time that you wanted because k is a constant. I'm gonna use time 100 seconds. At that time, the concentration of my SO2Cl2 is 0 0.0971 molar. I'm gonna subtract natural log of my initial concentration of SO2Cl2, which is 0 0.100 molar, equal to negative rate constant K, which is what we're looking for, at time T, or 100 seconds. Calculator. Natural log, 0 0.0971, close parentheses, minus natural log, 0 0.100, close parentheses, negative 0 0.02. Nine four equals negative k times one hundred. 
Divide each side by negative 100. K is equal to 2.94 times 10 to the minus 4 per second. Woo! Rate constant. Done. If the reaction is carried out at the same temperature and the initial concentration of SO2CO2 is 0.0225 molar, what will the SO2CO2 concentration be after 865 seconds? All right, again, we're gonna use our integrated rate law. Now we've determined the rate constant at this temperature. So here is an example of the power of the integrated rate loss. We wanna know what is the concentration going to be after 865 seconds. We know that the initial concentration is 0.0225 molar. And at this temperature, we know the rate constant is 2.94 times 10 to the minus 4 per second. And again, we want to know the concentration after 865 seconds. Calculator. Negative 2.94 times 865 is negative 0 0.25. Four, no units. We're going to add to this the natural log 0 0.0225. Close parentheses, answer. All right, we're going to add to this the natural log of 0 0.0225. Close parentheses, answer. Natural log of x is equal to negative 4.05. Solve for x. I'm going to do second natural log e to the negative 4.05. Boom. After 865 seconds, my concentration will have gone from 0.0225 molar down to 0.0174 molar. And we are done.